Next up from our studio here in Stockholm, we have Anexin Pharmaceuticals and presenting is CEO Anders Hegerstrand. Welcome Anders. Thank you very much. So I'm going to talk to you about Anexin Pharmaceuticals. I will start with presenting a little bit of an overview, then I'll talk about the rights issue that we just announced. I will talk about who we are and what we do, what are basic science and our key focus in the clinical development and where we've come so far. The overview is that we are listed on First North. Uh, we are Stockholm based. We have a semi virtual organization, which means that we are a few employees, only five, but we are world leading in the field of NXN A5. I will come back to that. Our main product is NXV, which as you can see in the little vial down there to the, to the right. It's really going to be a first in class biological product. Uh, it ha we have produced it on, under GMP conditions, which means that it's fully fledged for clinical purposes and we have to do some modifications on the process, it's only minor so, uh, to take it into phase three into the market. We have strong IP protection protect, protecting the product as such and the production of it and the use of it in many clinical indications. We're happy to have announced fairly recently that we have finished our phase one trial, which opens a lot of doors for us. We have a focus on ophthalmology and indication called retinal vein occlusion, which is really our key focus at the moment. We are starting an imaging trial in the Netherlands. I'll come back to that. We hope to start a phase two proof of concept trial with the financing that we're currently looking at. So the rights issue is the price is set for 125. With that issue, we will raise 73.5 million. It comes with a warrant issue in April. So shareholders will have the opportunity to, to invest even more in the company, which would give us another 18 to 29 million, depending on the stock price at the time to which the owners will get 70% 70, 70 price reduction on the stock price. Our largest shareholders have, have committed to exercise all warrants acquired in that rights issue, and the whole rights issue is actually guaranteed as a whole. Uh, I think most importantly, probably to the right, is uh, this prescription period starts uh, at October 20. We'll pre present the prospectus in October 19th, and the end of the subscription is at November 3rd. The proceeds will be used for, first and foremost for our phase two proof of concept trial in RBO. Then we'll obviously work with the product further, do the business development and protect the patents and so forth, amounting to the total 73.5 million. Well, the team here is a really, uh, really good one. Uh, myself, I'm the CEO, background MD, PhD from Karolinska, worked in Astra, and then became AstraZeneca. Then I joined this uh, sort of the life science community in Sweden with startup companies. Have uh, sort of led the two of them to to uh, acquisitions. Uh, I joined the board of the company in in 2018. Who became the CEO in 2019. Uh, Anna Frostegord is the CEO. CMO. She's working in the in this, in this field of vaccine biology for for I think uh, 15 years or so. Uh, Susan Suchdev is our CEO with background from Pfizer and CROs running clinical trials. Henrik Palm is our CFO with a lot of experience from different life science companies in Sweden. Ulrika Handal is our key individual who knows everybody, everything about producing uh, biological material for the clinic. And our therapy head of ophthalmology is not yet announced, but he's a very senior uh, ophthalmologist with a clinical ex and pharmaceutical company experience. I'm not going into details about the board, but we have a representative in the chairman, uh, Ulrika Axel, who's done a tremendous uh, work in the US, before, first in AstraZeneca or Astra and then in the U.S. taking company from, from private to public uh, to, into NASDAQ and with a medicine registered for treatment of Parkinson's. But we also have representatives working with pharmaceutical development. We have uh, investor relations. Uh, Carl Fredrik is representing the owners. Johan Frostegård is the founder. And Morten is the, is the key uh, business development expertise in the, in the company. Now this sort of switch gears a little bit and I'll show you a movie that describes our key focus. Over 16 million people worldwide are diagnosed with retinal vein occlusion. This eye disease, also known as RVO, is one of the most common causes of vision loss. At the moment, no treatment is capable of helping these patients before complications occur. To solve this, Anexin Pharmaceuticals is developing the biological drug candidate ANXV, a recombinant human protein Anexin A5. RVO can be caused by sticky red blood cells. 
cells that are defined by the lipid molecule found on their surface, PS. These sticky cells can form a blockage in the vein at the back of the eye, resulting in inflammation, cell damage, swelling and pressure on the nerves. Such a blockage can eventually lead to loss of vision and, in some cases, blindness. This is how ANXV is expected to work. After being introduced into the body, it finds the blockage in the eye vein. It then proceeds to build a shield, covering the PS on the sticky red blood cells. This ANXV shield stops the cells from sticking, thereby decreasing the blockage, while also helping to battle inflammation and repair damaged cells. As blood flow improves, the swelling and pressure on the nerves starts to diminish. Ultimately, if everything goes as expected, the patient's vision will improve, significantly reducing the risk of blindness. This makes ANXV a potential breakthrough solution for RVO patients all over the world. So you saw what NXV can do for patients with RVO. Uh, I'll now tell you a little bit about the background of the, this idea. So NXN A5 is a defense protein. It sits in every cell in the body. It's particularly enriched in barrier cells, which is, has, has an interface to the air or to the blood, etc. Uh, it's really in there to defend cells. So once there's a danger signal by the cells, it gets destroyed, gets disturbed. It flips on the outside of the cells binds phosphatidylserine, which is the lipid that does the signaling, but nxn A5 is sort of physically and, and practically binding to PS to reduce the signaling of PS. And th therefore, nxn A5 has been called protective shield, band-aid, bloodhounds, it really homes into to, uh, phosphatidylserine. And if you label nxn A5 with a radioactive label, a short-lived one, and inject it into patients, you can actually see the joints of a patient with uh, arthritis light up like this, where you can see the patient has undergone balloon catheterization in the artery of the leg, where an XN A5 has been injected again. You can see it binds to the, the area which has been destroyed by the balloon catheter. And that's it has been used in f up to 400 patients um, for this specific purpose as a diagnostic. With this overall very strong opportunities like protecting cells, you can select almost any indication which involves cell destruction and cell and inflammation. But we have fo focused on the niche indication called retinal vein occlusion. I will come back to that. But we have an interest potentially in all of the other ones listed on this image, including cancer and COVID-19. And COVID-19 specifically, we have an interaction and collaboration with a, with a Dutch team who wants to use our NXV in the clinical trial uh, in, in COVID-19 patients. So when you do this, obviously you have to produce the, the compound under GMP conditions, as mentioned. Uh, we also have to do a phase one clinical trial. That's what we have done and reported. We do a traditional single administration dose and multiple administrations. So we treat healthy volunteers up to five days with a drug. Uh, and it has been, it's, it's, it says ongoing, but has been completed. Uh, we have no sim limited, limiting safety issue reported. And this platform study will support any clinical development. Retinal vein occlusion is our focus. To the right, you can see how patients would experience uh, the, the vision on, the, on one of the eye affected. It looks very dim, it can be complete, com completely blind, or it may be slightly less than this. But the cause is really a blood clot in the vein of the eye. The, blood, the veins are supposed to lead the blood away from the eye, but if it stops, you get a, get a back, back flow and it gets swelling and destruction of the cells in the retina. Current therapies look like this. Antibodies are injected into the eye. Uh, it's the second most cause of co common cause of blindness. Actually, 16 patients are diagnosed with this. So these patients will receive these treatment up to uh, six times monthly, sorry, once, once a month for six months. Uh, they call Lucentis, Ilea, and off-label Avastin. It's not really an effective drug. Only 30% yet really improved. But still, it's a 20 billion US dollars plus indication, it's estimated value in 2023. So it's a huge market. Why we think NXCV can work is that if you take out the red blood cells of these patients and bring them into a lab, you can see they are sticky to each other and then they will stick to the endothelial cells uh, which are coming from the microvascular system. 
and NXNA5 is able to reduce that stickiness and stop that adhesion to the vasculature. So for retin retinal vein occlusion, this can, can become a paradigm shift. We want to treat the patients early. We don't want to treat the same kind of mechanism or late stage effects that anti-VEGFs would, would treat. Coming in early, we want to potentially unblock the occlusion. We want to protect cells at risk, but they're still viable in the retina, which are key to transfer the light into uh, an image back in the brain. It's also in, in anti-inflammatory. We will have effects on vision. We'll have less causing of new blood vessel growth, which is what anti-VEGFs treat, essentially. So there will be fewer anti-VEGF injections, meaning that we will tap into a huge market. We'll do an imaging trial in the Netherlands. I mentioned that. We hope to see that with the fluorescent annexin A5 injected into patients with the disease, we will find it that it binds to the right places in the eye near the occlusion, near where the, where the injury is. That study is supposedly starting any day now. So we have met with key authorities, the FDA, the British Authority, and the Icelandic Authority, where the leading person in the, in the European ophthalmology field is working. We got a lot of good answers, but clear answers. And one of the reasons why we choose the US for a phase two trial was, was, a very, was a good interaction with all the agencies, in particular with the FDA. So the phase two trial is really about studying the effect of an X and A5 first and foremost for safety, because it's the first time in patients, but also for efficacy. We will explore multiple efficacy, in nothing, not just vision. We will look into the eye with, with sophisticated equipment and see the survival of cells in the eye and look at blood flow, etc. About 20 patients will be investigated, and we are sort of at the brink of, of, of filing uh, the, uh, the IND to the FDA. So the company's strategy is really to have a very broad thinking about an exin. A5 and NXV, but we are focusing on the first in human study, which we finished, focus on the imaging to support the phase two trial. We have got the regulatory advice. We will start the phase two trial, hopefully late this year or early next year. And then we will sort of also work to find new indications. We're doing some explorative work in collaboration with the Dutch doctors who are looking at COVID-19, but we think that we can actually expand into new territories during the next period of time. But first and foremost, RVO is our focus. Once we're done and hopefully got the positive phase two trial data, we're open to continue to develop this into the, to the market. And we know from the discussions with authorities how to move forward. Should we find a licensing partner and we can get a good deal, we can do that as well. And again, uh, we're working with the basic biology like NXV, which is a protective a naturally occurring protein, which we think we can take into many different directions, but our first and foremost focus is RBO. And with that, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Anders, for this uh, presentation. That's very thank interesting. Um, so I just have a couple of questions for you. You just mentioned your clinical strategy for ANXV. Um, and you're going into uh, retinal vein occlusion there. Why did you choose retinal vein occlusion for, for your phase two study? So there's a number of reasons. First and foremost, you have to look at the scientific rationale where there was this, I think the specific data coming from patients with blood cells where they are sticky and we can unblock that stickiness to them. So it's, it's not only animal data, it's, it's really human data, almost not, not clinical, but ex vivo data, as we call it. That was a strong rationale. It's also a disease where the clinical development program is not huge. Uh, it's, not, it's, it's for a company our size, we can potentially take it to the market ourselves. Uh, and also, it's uh, amenable to some really, we can look into the eye, you can do a lot of interesting experimentation. We do something different than the anti-VEGFs. So we're sort of working carefully towards that. And it's a huge market, even though most of the viewers or listeners have not heard about it. It's a 20 billion US dollar market. So one, if you just you know, get one and a half percent of that market, we're, we're in sell for you know, one. <laughs> Yeah, a lot of money. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Um, you also mentioned that the, the study will take place in the U.S. Why did you choose the U.S. for this study? Well, a couple of reasons. Obviously, the U.S. is the largest market for, for the existing products as well. It's, it's, it's having the FDA's feedback and having the FDA approve your study and being involved in the development is a strength no matter where you go in the end, if you go to the market on your own or if you talk to license partners, they will be really interested in what the FDA has to say. 
and we had a good interaction with them in springtime this year. And I think that's, you know, it was it was a natural choice. Mm -hmm. And uh, finally, what would you say to uh, potential investors who who should be investing in NXA? Well, you know, we have we have taken a lot of costs to produce the protein which we have now at GMP quality. We have gone through the toxicology testing in animals. We've done the phase one. So now many, many doors are open, like I said. So it's now the time when we're going to get clinical data and, and companies like ours will, you know, potentially get a much better and interesting valuation at the time you get clinical data. Well, great. Thanks so much for answering the questions and thanks again for your presentation. And we wish you all the best for your coming work. Thank you very much.